happy Father's Day to you all and a happy, 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 happy day to all fathers who have been responsible to their children and have been celebrated today. If you're, you're a father and you haven't been celebrated today, hmm, time for introspection, right? Is it because you didn't do something right or it's because you have been abandoned by your children or the people who you availed yourself to? Whatever it is, we the stand for here. We say we celebrate you. There's always an opportunity to make an amend. There's always an opportunity to make a U turn. Welcome to the standpoint today. It's Father's Day, and we are about to celebrate an amazing group of fathers. For a long time, we have taken, in fact, because we do not understand them, and um, mainly because they have been sold out to God, body, soul, and spirit. And I'm talking about Catholic priests. Some of us who are non-Catholics, we have all sorts of perceptions about them. Today, we'll get to know them and find out why they are called fathers. Well, let me say thank you to GTP for my cloth. This one is new style. They have various ranges. Make sure you patronize it. My dress was made for me by Ophelia Crossland Designs. Thank you so much today. My dress looks like, you know, what the Reverend Fathers wear, you know. So I'll fit in. I'll fit in perfectly. Well, thank you to Chriselle Beauty Salon and Spa for my hair. My beads by Trendy Trends. For the past three weeks, I've been wearing Trendy Trends. And we say thank you to them. Next week, we'll be featuring a different designer as well. Thank you to Papa Cosmetics for the makeup product. They have the whole range. And then beautifully applied by Nax Beauty Studio. Thank you so much to them. We take a break. When we come back, we meet three fine. And when I say fine, I mean fine Reverend Fathers in the studio. But remember... They are sold out to God. So off limits. We'll be back. Welcome back to the standpoint. Let me say thank you to our sponsors. That's GTP. Um, they say our style is ageless. Our pattern limitless. Our designs are endless. Our beauty never fades. GTP, timeless. And Ghana Oil Company, Goyal Arinipa, and Kasa. My extreme left, I have Reverend Father Dennis Richard Kwejo Poku. He is the chaplain at the Tema Secondary School. Welcome to the standpoint, Father. Next to him, I have Reverend Father Fanny Adi S.J. He is the founding director, Arupe. Okay, Jesuit Institute. Welcome to the standpoint. And next to me, I have Reverend Father Evans Senna. Hey, Father, your hand right, I didn't see it properly. Senna Kweku Halulu. Halolo. 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 What's the meaning of Halolo? It means a big society or a big song. A big society or a big song. Sure. Okay. Welcome to the standpoint, all three of you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Let me say a, a prayer for Father, please forgive me. This is a show. I am not intentionally going to sin, especially since I need my leg to heal. <laughs> but please let me ask you. Why did you decide to become Reverend Fathers? Five men like you. Why? <laughs> Why did you decide to rob this community <laughs> of women of such five men? Let me start with you, Father Pani. <laughs> Why me? <laughs> Different uh, apparel. <laughs> well, I'll say I was, I was attracted to the priesthood by a smile. Really, that's what it was. By a smile. By a smile. You know, um, the smile of a priest, another priest that I had known. Um, we know him now as, as the Archbishop of Cape Coast. I knew him growing up as a kid. This is... Uh, Are you sure you were not forced? To I wasn't forced at all. I knew him as Father Buckle, Archbishop Palmer Buckle. Yeah. I knew him when I was growing up, you know, and the smile, the, the joy he exuded is what attracted me initially. At what age? I was probably about nine. We decided to be. Then, way back, I remember telling my parents that this is what I wanted to become. A what priest. did they say? Um, my, my father took it with in a stride. My mother wept, I think, in joy. <laughs> but she wept with that. I'm yeah, like, sure I think it was joy. I think it was joy. You know, and then I continued along the line, you know, through uh, high school, Pope John, 
through to to you know seminary and then I continued. Throughout the journey you may you mean you were not sidetracked? I would have I mean there were moments, you know, I there were moments, but um, perhaps I've said enough about myself <laughs> <laughs> an interesting one. Okay. When I was in, I think I was in my first year in Pope John, and a friend of mine from Bishop Bowers, I went to Bishop Bowers, uh, a, a girlfriend of mine in Bishop Bowers, uh, you know, gave me in my first year a book, the title of which is The Thorn Birds, okay. and probably they know about yeah. it. It's about, uh, yeah, it's about a young, handsome priest who, yes. you know, and I kept I on, read, I, read it right. yes. I kept on wondering why she gave me that, that book, you know, perhaps to sidetrack me, <laughs> but I kept my focus, and today I'm a Catholic priest, and joyful, and smiling as well. Maybe attracting others. Father, we are not saying that, you know, you don't deserve fine things, but these are questions we have to be asking right now. Father Dennis. I think my story is um, a little bit different from that of Father Pani. I, growing up, I never had the idea of becoming a Catholic priest. Uh, the focus was to become an engineer, to follow my, the steps of my uncle. Then after senior high school, because of that, when armed forces, you know, the military was in, in the mind. And then after senior high school, uh, my catechist wrote, an application letter on my behalf to the vocations what director. <laughs> Ex uh, warrant officer uh, Joseph Aizanga. Is he, a, is he alive? Yeah, he's still alive, and I want to say thank you to him. <laughs> so, I, I got the reply from the vocations officer the same day I got admission letter from tech. Wow. So, I took the two letters to my mom, and I like, okay. Which one? It's okay, you go and try the seminary. If it doesn't work, you just come back. <laughs> and I went and never came back. <laughs> Why did your brother tell you to do <laughs> Yeah, probably it's something when we meet God, we're going to ask that question. But, but what, okay, what, what made you stay? What made me stay? It was the love. And then one, another priest also I met in there, Father Zikwe. And then he gave me I did the things I loved. Mm. I always want to work with people and then with books. And Father always gave me that joy. So mm. I kept on reading about the priesthood, the joy of the priesthood, and then to serve humanity. Mm. So it's like, OK. He helped me to you know, change my focus from the engineering to um, biblical engineering. And <laughs> <laughs> that that but, light. But I mean, um, growing up, were you the kind of the crusade? No, 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 no. Always I was. I wasn't. I believe you were a Catholic. You yeah, a Catholic, a serious mass server. Okay. But then in school, I wasn't in the SU. I was in the cadet. I was a sportsman. Mm. And that was. I, I don't remember going for even a CASU meeting when I was in armed forces. You <laughs> <laughs> <No>. asked me. <laughs> 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 I think I have a very similar story to you, Father Dennis. Um, okay. I remember I had admissions to tech to read civil engineering. So two weeks to time, one priest father, Prince Adelaide, he had lost a father then. So he came home and he was doing something in the garden. So I think he got his hands dirty and he asked that I give him water to wash his hands, which I did. And I think I didn't add soap, so I had to bring the soap later. And he washed his hands so meticulous. Look, this man took almost two minutes to wash his hands. So after I asked him why he took so long to wash his hands, because ordinarily we just do it that in seconds and yes. go away. So Father said, these hands hold the sacred body of Christ. Therefore, it must be kept holy. That was it. That same day, I went to my father, who was at the funeral grounds then, and told him that I wanted to be a priest. So the next day, he gave me money. <laughs> yes. So the next day, I had to go to St. Peter's for my transcript, and that was all. What did you tell your said. father? What did he say? Perhaps because he was mourning, he didn't understand what I said. Uh -huh, maybe. So then he didn't show any reaction. He just looked at me and continued with his funeral preparation. Did he so say what? Not at that point. That toy. And your mother? My mother wasn't there when I told my dad about it. So later on when I told my mom, it was a mixed feeling. Um, mixed feeling because she thought that I'll be the engineer to take care of her better. <laughs> and it was a mixed feeling, but... Now she's the happiest. And your, your father later on, when you realized what you were actually going, going to get yourself involved with? I think later on he confessed that it was his wish that at least one of his sons would be a priest. We are four boys. Okay. It was his wish later on. Father Kwani, how many are you in a family? We are three. Three? Three uh, siblings, yes. I have boys my, and girls. Um, an elder sister, an elder brother, and then myself. Okay. 
Yeah. Then is you? We are nine. Nine. Yeah, five boys and four girls. But now we are left to eight. The elder brother is in heaven with our father. And you are the only priest among them. Yes. How do your siblings feel about you being a Catholic priest? Initially, it was it was not the best because I remember. Twice, my brothers have tried to get me a girlfriend, and it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. But now they've come to accept that that is my fate, and so that is what yeah. God decides for us. Buddy, you? Yeah, um, I, I can recall that my, my elder brother, he, he studied in the U.S. For a long time, he was impressing upon me that, oh, why don't you write the SATs, sat and come over to, he was at Swarthmore College, and come think about, you know, expanding your horizons, doing other things. I was dogged in my, you know, in, in my focus on the priesthood, and I think after some time they all realized this. He sold out. Sold out, <laughs> sold out to God. Yeah. So totally sold out to God. Yes. You, your brothers, they understood. Oh, they were fine. They, they were, were fine. really fine. Very they fine. They didn't mind. No, no, my brothers were okay. They were okay. But really, you're a human being. Yes. Okay. Let's take the human being out okay. of it. From the time you left, you said uh, you were what? SHS. Yes, SHS. SHS. Yes, SHS. So, Father, God forgive me. <laughs> Within the journey, no girlfriend, nothing. Up to SHS. You didn't have a girlfriend, anything. Oh, okay. Up to SHS. Yes. So, this is before the priesthood. Before the priesthood. Okay. I don't know whether I should say she was a girlfriend or not. But <laughs> growing up, growing up, there was this, we were in a, a compound house, so to speak. And the daughter of the landlord. Look, we used to sit outside every evening. So I don't like telly, telly, no. I don't like watching telly because every evening she took yeah. the time. Yeah. So we sat outside every evening chatting, talking. Nobody said to each other that, oh, I like you, I like you too, but I think we understood each other. <laughs> you know that? You are boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We, I didn't say it formally, so but we understood each other. <laughs> yes. There was no intimacy. Oh, no, no. There was no intimacy. Sincerely, the only time I've got close to her was the forehead. Oh, no. She said that she had a dream that she had kissed me and was angry. Yeah. I said, why would I be angry? And she said, I should try and see. I couldn't. I just... <laughs> and that was the end. <laughs> and that was the end. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. The lady tried to trick you with your dream. I thought it was enough. It was a nice experience, the forehead. It was better than any other part. <laughs> How was she disappointed when you later on decided to go to the seminary? So, after some time, my brother met her and she came home. Look, that day was, was hell. Before my parents, she spoke her mind. She was a bit abusive. Mm -hmm. That at least we knew, and if I had any decision like that, I should have told her. Mm -hmm. But in any case, sold out. So you started breaking her long time. Mm -hmm. As I said, it was nothing formal. We knew it with yes. in our hands. But so. you know that side, <laughs> and you know that even at two today, you are breaking people's hands. You know there are still people who think that they can, you know, get you to. We are sold out. And then it's you two you were in what word? JHS, you said SHS. SHS, yeah, 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 SHS. You too. Yeah, yeah. Today, confession time. You are confessing. <laughs> yeah, so no people to confess. Today, my host. Yeah, there's no secrets in these things because of the persons we have become. Yeah. And I must say that there's one lady, she also didn't tell me anything, but she was keeping track of me, mm. you know, and it was on her wedding day I realized that she had a thing for me. On her wedding day? Yes. As Sydney. <laughs> because... <laughs> Our mates just get, um, called and said, Chai, you know, um, I'm using another name yeah, for the yeah. sake of audience. Uh, Baba is mm -hmm. getting married and, you know, you guys, Charlie, you have to be there. You are the only priest among us, mm -hmm. so you have to be there. I called the parish priest and I told him, you know, the, the lady is a friend. It's okay that you can preside and take the homily. And she walks in and there are tears in her eyes. So I told her, those the really female thing. Right. As, within the 10 minutes I was preaching, she kept on, you know, sobbing. And I was like, wow. So I told the middle of her, no, you know, Allah, it's a day. Let her, let her sob and she'll keep it. The Tuesday, I was in the house when the, the husband came in with her. And she was behind her husband and said, Father, we have to talk. I said, talk. Wow. Okay, come on, let's sit. First, thank you for our wedding. Everybody's talking about it. The homely was good, but we have not slept. And then 
they opened up. Ah, see me. I said, what did you feel? Why? No, no, as I'm talking, I was a little bit, uh, you know. I asked myself, but why? I said, yes, but you knew. You were tracking me. I said, yes, but, you know, in the seminar, okay, we do okay. courses at the university, yes. so... She realized that I was in Legon because our names were published. We graduated in Legon. She realized I had gone back to UCC. She saw it and we do a program at the Winnie Bar. She was just tracking me with academics. And I said, but you knew my house. You could have come. You, my sister is your friend. You never asked her question. Oh, knowing who you are, I just thinking that you're building your academic profiles. And when you start working, and to see you on my wedding day and... I have to tell my husband that this is the man I told you that I have somebody in mind that I could not allow you to touch me or come close as a boyfriend. I said, oh, I'm sorry. Hey! This cross you <laughs> This cross! Yeah, so that is it. On that note, let me take it. Falakwani, don't take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take a break and say thank you to our supporters, House of Foods. We are grateful to you. Go got to yogurt. As a woman, I always tell you, yogurt is very good for you. So if you're going for yogurt, go for go got to yogurt. It's natural, 100% made in Ghana. Awake Purified Water by Casa Preco and Royal Drinks also by Casa Preco. Thank you so much to them. We say thank you to Cake Technique, um, Yup Cleaning Services. Mary Matt Kitchen and Events GH. We are so, so grateful to them. And Impacus Creative Hub. Thank you so much. We'll be back. the standpoint yes so that to god but it hasn't been an easy road man if you think you have some temptations as a man watching here this one ha huh. well again let me say thank you to gtp for my cloth my dress was made for me by ophelia crossland designs i'm so grateful to them hair by chrysel beauty and spa and then of course my beads by trendy trends she's in tema young lady trying to you know make something out of what god has given the talent god has given her. So working with her hands you know i always tell you that god always give god gave all of us a talent something and we have to put it to good use thank you to Papa cosmetics for the makeup products and applied by nax a beauty studio father Pani? yes Fadakbani Adi S J. Who were the temptations? Well, I'd say we we right then at, at, at nine years Bishop Bowers. There, there was one or two of the girls who who who, who got my fancy. Yeah. You know, a crush here and there. And you know, and we have a um, a WhatsApp page. Uh -huh. And recently, some of the girls were were, were were actually confessing about how you know Bani was always they such a catch. Precisely, you know. Um, but then yes, I I even at nine I still wanted to. And then furthermore, when I was about 12, it kind of even bolstered some more. And that's when I decided to go to Pope John Secondary School Engineer Seminary. <laughs> you flee, you flee. <laughs> Precisely. You know, so that, you was, from temptation. that was my flight. But <laughs> even then, you know, I had always a keen sense of when, you know, attraction and admiration was getting very, very keen. Do you get sexually harassed even now? Uh, I wouldn't say sexually harassed. But get harassed. Um, not even harassed. I'd say there's, <clears throat> there's a sense of, oh, Father, so you, you've not been calling me, you know, things like that. You, you get that and you're like, oh, I have lots of things to do. So I'm sure my brothers have similar experiences. You know, I don't know if I sent it to all of you because when I, I posted it, one of my friends, she's not a Ghanaian, she's a Sierra Leonean, and she said a brother is a priest and a brother is being sexually harassed like everywhere. That sometimes people even said send their nude pictures mm. to him and all that. I don't think it's strange to you guys. You you also go through that, Father Dennis. Probably in a different way, not sending nude pictures, but uh, the comments and mm. because I work <coughs> in the school environment and with the young ones, mm. and some of them openly would say, um, "I wish," you know, and these statements will always set you thinking. And uh, we all have our moments, dark moments, uh, in the priesthood. And 
assuming you're in your dark moments and so all these thoughts um, are flashed in your face, it becomes a little bit... Um, mm. I'll use your words uh, harassing to you, your conscience. Mm. Yeah. But then coming openly, it's far... And the Ghanaian environment is far different from the Central African um, environment where mm. they are very forceful in those things. Father... Uh, so, even the son of man was tempted. <laughs> 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 we do, we do sometimes. But as Father Dennis is saying, it's not as forceful as, as, as yeah, it is. As um, the, the good thing is that when you see the signs, you're able to determine that this and this and that. Yeah. And we have what we call spiritual directors. Okay. So I have a friend, whenever I see the signs, you feel that no, this person, this is going that way. You just go to the person, talk with the person, okay. and you get those defensive mechanisms. Okay. So it's always good. But don't you have people questioning you that you as a priest, you've not been married, you don't have kids, so how can you counsel, how can you do those I, things? I have an interesting story in relation to that. Would you like to listen to hey, it? please. I'll tell you. I was thinking about it but just before you know, um, I came onto this program. A little about a week or two weeks ago, I was scrolling through um, WhatsApp status updates, okay. and I saw one update from one of the, um, the young people I knew from St. Anthony, where I worked before, oh, yeah. and he had written their suicidal thoughts. You know, and it struck me. This was around 10 o'clock. I was visiting my family at Hachu. Mm. You know, suicidal thoughts. And immediately, I called him, you know. And initially, he wasn't going, it wasn't going through. And then I got him on the, on the line, and he said, oh, Father, things are not looking well at all. So I immediately said to him, where are you? He said he was at Nungua. Mm. So I drove all the way from... At 10 p.m.? At 10 p.m. All the way from, from Hachu to Nungua. Met with him, chatted with him. We drove together to Christ the King. Um, cantonment. Mm -hmm. We went to the grotto and then to the Adoration Chapel. And when I dropped him back at, uh, at Nungwa, it was past midnight. And then I drove back to Kwabinya where I stay. And that gives you the, the, the life of the priest, the Catholic, the Roman Catholic priest. That readiness to go out and minister. And it's in those occasions that you feel and know that you've become a father. That's when you become a father. Yeah not just in the word of the religious but no. in, 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 action, in action and indeed, indeed. become a father, You've be out a... there because I'm just uh, wondering how many people would just drive out at that moment, yeah. you know, unless you're sold out to God. <laughs> unless you're sold out. And I'm sure my brothers have similar experiences. Yeah, Father Dennis, I was going to, so what, what is your role in, uh, you in school, yeah. like a mixed school? Life as a chaplain there is just to be a father to these um, young ones in, the, in various forms. As a Catholic priest, they don't want to see, it's not a Catholic priest they want to see. Mm. They want to see a father figure. And as a school chaplain, that is what you have to give to them at every point in time. And it's, it's not easy being a father figure, mm -hmm. you know, because they come, they, they pour out, they open up, and they want you to be the voice they want to hear. They don't want you, you to be judgmental. No. But sometimes you have to tell them, no, it's wrong, it's wrong. Yeah. And I remember one um, in Olam Secondary School, a young boy, and I, I was talking, I just have to use that forceful voice, it's wrong. I said, Father, this is what my father does, and I hate it. Ooh. I said, wow, okay, so I have to change. But I'm not there, but I had to then use another way to let him know that his action was wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what, all that he needed from me, and that is mm -hmm. what we've been doing sacrificing your time, you know, sleepless nights. In Olam, you had, we had at times also, even though it's not boarding school. But in Tamasco, it's been, uh, even though, I don't know, it going to bed, I just pray that, please, my phone should not ring. <laughs> 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 my, my phone should not ring. They can call me at any time. And they do. And now it's, it's like uh, second to none. When they scale the wall, and, you know, the people know that that is where the, the chaplain lives and then you get a call and the father, your students are moving about. And then you have to go pick some of them and you listen to them. And you know, I have to tell a little bit of lies. But is this supposed mm. to be your role to be out there chasing after them and you know, going after them? Is this supposed to be or something that you go out of your way to do? The father figure in, in us, in, in me as a Catholic priest, makes me you know, want to go out to stand, to be there for the, for the kids. Because sometimes, you know, the rules are there, and once he goes into D.C., that is a committee, committee, he's going to be thrown out. But after listening to him, realize that no, he has to be given, or she has to be given a second chance. So mm. when the cases come, the senior house 
staff who always want to call, Father, please, want you to listen to this before we take it up. Mm. And I said, okay, you give me time with them. Okay. And so I must, there's an open confession. It's for a lot of them, I just have to, when I appear before administration, I have to, you know, come up with a story for them. <laughs> hmm, interesting, isn't it? Sometimes when you sit back, we think we know, especially non-Catholics, and maybe some Catholics, I'm sure, watching, will be surprised. You know about some of the things that we are learning today, but again, let me say thank you to our sponsors GTP, still timeless. They say our style is ageless, our pattern limitless, our designs are endless, our beauty never fades. GTP, timeless, and Ghana Oil Company, Goal Arinipa and Casa Goal Go Energy, good energy, and of course, I always tell you, patronize made in Ghana. That's the only way we can develop our own. Okay? We take a break. When we come back, this discussion continues. the standpoint and we are supported by Kodams in Parkes Creative Hub. Go got you got a wet purified drinking water, Casapreco Royal Drinks, Cake Technique International, House of Food, Mary Matt Kitchen and Event GH, Yacht Cleaning Services, and Dream Over. Dream Over powers our website www.standpoint.com.gh. Father Senna, Father Evans, Senna Kwaku. Halulu, how has it been like for you so far as a priest? How long have you been a priest, anyway? That's my fourth year. Fourth year? Yes. Fourth year. So and you went to school for like, how, how many, it's, so you were in school studying for how long? Let's say, in total, about 10 years. Huh? To be a priest. Are you serious? Very serious. Same. Yeah. I did, you um, did, you did, did it more. Wow. Years. 10 years. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Ten years to become yes. a priest, and you've Ten been years. a priest for four years. For four years. How has it been like for you, being a priest? The first is the name. Um, I remember when I was ordained a fresh priest. Mm. I loved to be called Father. I, I just loved Father. So sometimes when, after Mass, mm. so when I bless, and I said, oh, have a nice day, they don't respond, oh, same to you, Father. I loved that. <laughs> I loved that, to be called Father. But I felt that... Um, they see you as a father figure, as somebody mm -hmm. helping them to get to God. And, mm -hmm. and, and that has been very refreshing. Okay. Apart from that, to be there for people, it's mm -hmm. amazing what people go through. Mm -hmm. The rich, yeah. the poor, the old, the young. So amazing what they go through. And it's also amazing how little things you do touch people's life. So somebody is sick, and Father, you spend time one hour to be with a person. Sometimes somebody is really sick. You go, you don't do anything, just sit with the person. Yeah. After I offer a prayer, the person is so, so grateful. Sure. Somebody doesn't have, and trust me, fathers, we do a lot of charity. Somebody yeah. doesn't have, yeah. comes to the, the mission house and asks, Father, could you help me with something? Mm -hmm. Then you give. It's very refreshing. There are sometimes you sit in your room and cry. Mm -hmm. Covered under this word is a lot of, a lot of sorrow sometimes. I remember... When I lost my dad, for instance, oh. uh, I always tell people, oh, when you lose your dad, oh, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Till I lost mine, <laughs> I don't <didn't> understand. <laughs> and one day, I sat in my room. I was very strong outside. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. My mom would be crying and I will be... One day, it got to me and I sat in the room and I wept. Mm. Only God knows what I told him that day. If he replaced it on air, I'm sure many people will ask, is this guy a priest? A priest. <laughs> I told him a lot of things. And yeah. We have down moments. Yeah. Moments that can be very, very alone. Yeah. Moments that you wish you had somebody the to The why me, to. Lord. Mm. The why me, Lord moment. How has it been like dealing with the students, boys? Let me take a sip. <laughs> Trust me, boys go through a lot. Yeah. We sometimes think that it's only about the girls. Back in St. Thomas Aquinas, a lot of the boys have encountered go through a lot of abuse mm. by parents, by guardians, and we think that it's okay. Virtually, some boy can walk into your office and beg for money. Father, I've not eaten the whole day. Some, I remember one day I was, my, I was going to my office around 12. I had to do something in the office around 12 midnight, and I saw boys sleeping. 
a number of them, about four or five, sleeping in the classroom. Ordinarily, of course, an unknown teacher would use that force. Mm -hmm. But I took time. I called them to my office. And the next day, I quizzed them one after the other. It's amazing what they go through in, at home. Yeah. How sometimes they are abused, even sexually, mm -hmm. by those they live with. Yeah. So they find refuge in sleeping in the classrooms and that. They've taught me a lot that, look, men also need help. Yeah. Men do cry, and boys go through a lot. A lot. They really go through a lot. And I have some sons who, I mean, confide in me sometimes, and I can't believe it, you know. But moving on. Mm. Do you sometimes get involved, I mean, emotionally involved? Um, involved to the point of tears, yes. Mm -hmm. um, involved to the point of, of questioning God. I can give you a, a perf one good example. Um, a little boy I baptized, you know, and uh, after some months, his mother told me that he had some medical condition and was at Kolibu Teaching Hospital, mm -hmm. you know, and he was on life support. And I remember going to Kolibu you know, to the children's ward and praying. I don't know how much I've been, I prayed, prayed, prayed. He still died, you know, and uh, that's, yes. Yeah. And um, I don't regret getting involved at that, at that level. Yeah. You know, it's compassion. And Jesus was compassionate. Yeah. You know? And if we are to be truly, you know, um, imitators of him, mm. I don't see why we shouldn't get involved to that level. Yes, so yeah. But as priests, do you think sometimes we put too much pressure and we expect too much from you? Perhaps. Um, I, we expect you to be, I mean, superhuman, kind of. Maybe. <laughs> I, I try, I try as, 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 as an individual to, to uh, disabuse that, that, that um, uh, perception myself, you know, right. because people know me to be very, in fact, I'm called by some friends the jolly Jesuit, you know, <laughs> because I'm very lighthearted. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to serious matters, I'm also very serious. Mm. Um, but I think, yes, there are times people have perceptions that are, you know too exaggerated mm. we have human beings yeah we have we get involved we get you know compassion and all of that it's mm. part of being um like jesus who mm. who was involved yeah. god and fully truly god fully truly man but truly you know involved in our own mm. uh life as human beings as well today is father's day sure. okay so what have you got to say to father figures out there i think the one thing which you all know is that it's a big privilege to be called a father and that is what God has given to everybody. That it's God's will that at this particular point in time, you are a father. Mm -hmm. So if you have fathered any child, know that it's God's will. And God expects that you should do so. And it's a good thing to know that God is telling me at this point in time that I'll be a father. So to all fathers, no matter how difficult it is, know that it's the will of the Father in heaven. And God never gives us any tax without equipping us to do so. God will certainly give us the grace to be able to live as fathers. And for men, please talk. Open up. Talk to your priests. Talk to your pastors. Do not let us take everything in and boil. Yeah. It's important that we talk. Hmm. If you are going through any difficulty, any stress, any moment, please speak to somebody. Yeah. And through that, we we'll become better fathers. I pray that God would bless many fathers who are doing extremely well. The hmm. picture is that a lot are doing well. Of course, the dailies only report those who are not doing well. But a lot are doing well. And may God bless those lot who are doing well. And happy Father's Day to all fathers. And God bless you. Amen to that. Father Dennis. To my dear fathers and father figures, I just want you to know the image of um, a wounded healer. Mm. The wounded healer is never heard. His pains are never seen. But indeed, people expect a lot from you. Let's know you are doing your best. And God knows that what you're doing is indeed going a long way. You might think that your children are not really appreciative of what you are doing for them. Because this time they are complaining and it's giving you help. But please just know that they are learning from you. Mm. Do not stop doing the good. I'm underlining this word. I like using it. The good. Not just good. Good, good. Everybody can do it. Mm. But the good is very unique to mm. every individual person. So you as a wounded healer, the great healer is with you, and so keep doing what is good, and the Lord himself will do the rest. Thank Amen you. to that. Father Kwaniadi, before you come in, I see this thing has been on your table. Uh, what is it about? Well, I have items for you. Okay. As, you know, I have this from Rome. It's a holy rosary. 
Oh, thank you. Oh, from, you have to from, teach me how to say it. I'll be very happy to. This is a very pokey. Hello. Oh, wow. This is unique. How did you know I love red? Just. And it has a very smell, lovely fragrance to it as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just, and then this <laughs> is from the Arupi Jeshmet Institute. Institute. Okay. You know, that I, I, that I lead. It's a, it's oh, okay. a, a notepad oh, for yourself you. and for your dear husband. Thank you. And for the producer. You know. Oh, whoever else. As I'm sure that I'm not seeing the producer. I'm happy. In fact, I'm the producer. Wonderful. <laughs> so you have two copies. I have two copies. <laughs> Thank you yes, so, so that, much. That's, Thank you. That's Thank what you. I have for you. Thank you. Really grateful. Right. And then, in conclusion, your message. Um, the first comes from uh, a poem by Khalil Gibran, The ch Children. And it talks about how children are, are like arrows. Mm. They proceed from you and they go forth. Mm. And that's what I think every parent mother or father is supposed to be, mm. you know, who shoots the arrows forth, even beyond your wildest uh, imagination. Mm -hmm. So that's what as parents we're supposed to do, to enable our children reach beyond us, you know. So if pa parents, fathers are able to do that, they're doing well. The second one comes from my own experience as a priest, and mm. since this is fathers, it's, it, it's, it's a line from um, a song by uh, Paul Simon and uh, Art Garfunkel. Yeah. Bridge over troubled waters, yeah. you know, which is my favorite song and yeah. captures for me what it means to be a priest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bridge over troubled waters, I will lay me down yeah. like a bridge over troubled waters. So that's it. That we as parents, as fathers, are supposed to be bridges over troubled waters for our children to help them cross over. Yeah. You know, so that's what I think I'd like to be as a priest, and I'd like you know all fathers to be bridges over troubled waters. And finally, to end with the scriptures, you know, Jesus speaks of God as our Father. So to ask that, you know, um, fathers model the Father in heaven and become participants in that great fatherhood that comes from God. That's it. I think this will go a long way to help, not just me, but a lot of people watching us from across the world. And I am sure it's going to come back as one of the best programs we have so far. We are so grateful. And today being Father's Day, we have a little token. Please bring it. Asantua, this, this is my niece. She's afraid of the cameras. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. We have um, this. Is, what's your favorite color? <laughs> I still give you red because yeah, it's very. I'm always. I'm always. <laughs> <laughs> but the red is fine. Okay. okay. <laughs> this is for you from Empire Kiss. Thank this you very you. much. And kindly pass this on to. I could keep it for you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. much. So much. <laughs> you can open it for us to see okay. from us. These are. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. So this is what we call the magic cup. Beautiful. Wow. When you put the hot water in it, right. it brings out all the beautiful shades of you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Very nice. So yeah. this, and you, you get the face down. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Please make sure you, you use it in change. Okay. Yes, it's hot. Thank you, thank, thank you so much. Um, this is from us to say thank you. And it was made for us by Imparkes um, um, company. And they, they do branding, anything yeah. you want to party, wedding, phone or whatever. You, you get in touch with them. They do beautiful branding for you as well. Thank you so much. Thank Wish you too. happy Father's Day. And God bless you. Bless you too. Okay, so this is the time point. We take a break. When we come back, I'll give you a bit of me. If you are called a father, don't take it for granted. Because our creator is referred to as a father. It says, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. So just as you want to be revered as a father, you want to be celebrated, you have a responsibility. Dear Father, you have a huge task. You have a huge role to play in the lives of your children. When I say children, it's not just a biological thing I'm talking about. Anybody entrusted to you, 
You have a responsibility to raise that child and not to abuse and to devour her or him. You have a responsibility to make sure that child is provided for. Both physically, emotionally, psychologically. Dear Father, you have a huge task. You have a charge to keep. And today, even as we celebrate you, the good ones, the amazing one, not because you are superhuman, not because you are infallible, but because through it all, you have been able to stay focused, dedicated, and held on to your responsibility. And those we condemn, we condemn because you fail to live up to your responsibility as a father. You fail to live up to the name you were given as a father. You know, my father was not perfect. May his soul rest in peace. But there isn't anything I can talk about without mentioning his name. Without remembering something that he has taught me. Being a father is not just about providing the material things. I stand here. Everything I am, apart from God, is my father. Because he invested in me. Dear father, your legacy is not the properties. It's not the cars. It's not the mansions. It's not the office. It's not the company. It's what your children will remember you for. How they feel deep down their heart about you. So yes, today is Father's Day. And we applaud you from the, from the, from the first gentleman of this land. The president to whoever. We are celebrating all of you. But please remember, a church to keep you half. A God to glorify. A never dying soul to save. Are you saving or you are killing? Whatever it is, it is a new beginning. This opportunity to turn it around. If you are doing good, keep doing good. If you are messing up, please sit up and do something right. As for me... All I am is a woman with super crazy faith in God. I believe God has given us a mother, father. God has given us charge. And, but I'm, I'm on fathers because today is Father's Day. And above all, he's given us wisdom. Let us learn to apply it. It is not easy, dear father. But you can do it. If you put your mind to it, you can do it. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. Bye for now.